Hello, in this video you will see how to create a JWT token and how to read a JWT token in C Sharp. Uh, now, this does not necessarily relate to APIs and how you validate them. This is more about uh, creating one, which is perfectly valid for API, but uh, it is about reading it, extracting information from it without uh, verifying it, uh, which you would obviously do in an API. If you want to learn more about APIs, take a look at the uh, .NET API course and uh, take a look at the other videos at this channel. But this is going to explain uh, the structure of the whole thing. Now, uh, in order to deal with these tokens, whether you're dealing in an API or just uh, maybe doing some work with them in console applications or some other arrangements, uh, you will need this library. It is system identity model tokens.jwt. Now, the handling partially comes in APIs and .NET from another library. It's a whole API arrangement, web API, web in general thing, but this is still needed to create the actual token. Now, getting into the code, we have a little example. We basically have a, a way to generate and a way to read. So let's look at the first method, which is to generate. We have uh, a secret here. Now, the secret uh, needs to be also generated. It should be some kind of a, a randomized uh, byte array hash or something that you create. Uh, of course, you can also use uh, certificate files uh, for the whole signing process. That would be safer, and that is generally recommended. However, Whatever signature kind you use, uh, the reading and the writing would still be similar. So this is the secret and the handling of it. Again, take a look at the uh, Web API course uh, for .NET. Uh, that's going to explain a bit more about security uh, in general. Uh, the, the key is, of course, symmetric in this case. Uh, if it was asymmetric, uh, then you would have uh, uh, a file, um, a key file, essentially, uh, that you would use instead of uh, just a string, which the idea is kind of similar. It's more how you share it, how you use it, how you store it, and all those things. Uh, then we need uh, the credentials, the signing credentials, uh, to actually sign the key, because again, the whole thing is kind of available to the public if you know how to use it, if you know how to read it, the JW token, which you will see in a few minutes or in a couple of minutes, but it is signed with a signature. So in your backend, you would verify the signature, and if the signature matches, then you can use the data, which is sort of publicly available, so you kind of need to check what is being stored in the data as well. In general, you will see now in the claims, we will have an email probably that sometimes doesn't necessarily need to be stored. So do be mindful of those things, what needs to be stored in this uh, whole thing, because you are essentially verifying that the data is valid. You are not encrypting the data necessarily. So that is something to be quite careful of. But in general, JWT token contains some data. So the data would be in the claims. The whole data is essentially claims, but those claims contain certain pieces of data, such as user ID, for example, or username, or name for the user, or the roles, the permissions, uh, uh, the date of birth, uh, their customer ID, or the VAT. Uh, number. All those things it can contain, but it should only contain the things that are actually usable, and most likely it would only end up being something like user ID. Perhaps the role as well if you're using role-based authentication system, authorization system. So again, be careful not to use too much in general. But in the actual claims, uh, we just have a list of claims which will then go into the whole token. And the claims you can name manually, such as here, we have role, admin, one of the claims, new claim, and list of claims, relatively straightforward. But you do have those sort of generic uh, 
proper names, uh, standard names such as SUB. Uh, so you can use that for like user ID uh, name uh, like that. You can use for the name. You can use email for email. So those will be standard. It will be easier if you have uh, something more public, perhaps it will be easier to share them. If you have your custom system, it really doesn't matter that much. Uh, so we have uh, several different arrangements here. Uh, basically, you either use this. So this is uh, ISO standard kind of a thing. Uh, you can share them. If you share this whole uh, API or library or whatever it is, um, you might want to use them. But in general, when you read them, there is no problem either using uh, just your own desired name or one of those generic names that would come from JWT registered claim names. Uh, now there are other options to access these and there are variations, so do be kind of careful with those as well. Uh, see if uh, your back and the front end or whatever kind of relationship with your uh, read and write essentially programs you have uh, uh, do match those names. So that is something to be considered. And if you do get a problem, uh, do look into that. Maybe that uh, is your cause. Uh, the next thing is actually generating the token. So for the token, of course, we will need the claims. The claims are right here. And then we will have the audience. So you will have the audience, uh, in this case, it's my API. So whatever sort of um, access point you have, the issue is the app. So say if you have um, two different apps and you have uh, perhaps uh, uh, six different APIs, you might have uh, several audiences uh, uh, listed like this, um, and uh, it will be one app, yes, sir. So uh, that's something you can check as well, which is kind of useful to check, see where the claim came from, it's, uh, if it's all good uh, in that regard. Uh, um, it's not the biggest thing here, but just as additional sort of safety net, you might uh, do that as well. Now, we also have expires, which is an actually important thing. If you go again into the API thing, uh, these would be, these, these would expire, so it wouldn't be valid. We would still be able to read it. The reading, again, does not mean validation. We can still read it. We'll just read when it expires. We will not be able to validate it if we validate it, because if... Uh, the time has passed, it expired, well, it's not going to be valid. Even if the signature is valid, it's not going to be valid anymore. And that is how you come to all these access and refresh tokens, how they correlate and how they work together. Uh, you have a refresh token to refresh the WT token and all that thing. Uh, so something to keep in mind as well. Uh, it will be readable, but it will be uh, invalid basically and then we have the credentials the credentials we created here with a symmetric key in this case although it could be another option as well uh, the next thing is just simply to write the token to a string or create a string from a token rather now the token uh, is always stored as um, in in browser or in an app, in mobile app, uh, in Windows app, wherever it is, uh, as a string. So we do need to have a string, and in order to get the string, uh, it is a bit of a weird arrangement. We don't get it directly from GW security token. We need to create a handler, and the handler then writes a token from token, uh, which is a GW T security token. Kind of a weird arrangement, but relatively straightforward as well. You just need to construct another class and pass through your uh, sort of created token into that little method, and then you get your token string, which can be read and which can be validated. And it gets validated by validating the actual signature and then things like uh, issuer, audience, claims, uh, well, not claims really, but uh, expires for sure. And uh, well, definitely the credentials. The most important thing is credentials. Of course, expires is kind of important as well. The next thing is reading it. So we get the token, we can read it. This is um, kind of a bit of a 
comprehensive thing so you can actually play around with this uh, change different things add more claims uh, this code is available on patreon for download so do take a look at that there's also some free courses on certain tiers on the almost the cheapest tiers as well so you do get quite some good content on patreon uh, uh, with not a lot of money spent uh, but for reading it, uh, we do have a bit of an interesting arrangement here. We'll read the whole token, but really, we just have two lines of code. We have JWT Security Token Handler, which if you remember, right here, we use that same thing for writing. So for reading, we use that same thing. We take the token and we read it. Uh, again, validating it would be a completely different thing. We would need to uh, uh, create uh, or recreate the same signature with uh, provided uh, details. Uh, it usually is done on the back end, right? You have a front end, you have a back end. But again, uh, the recommendation is to take a look at the uh, .NET API call server is going to be some interesting data. If you want to just read and check out your tokens, you do this. If not, it's going to go into the whole startup thing and uh, uh, check that out. Uh, but for production purposes, the recommendation would most likely be uh, it is not a disaster to use a symmetric uh, arrangement, but a symmetric uh, key would be a recommended option. Uh, with that said, uh, do check out the Patreon for this source code and many other videos and source codes and uh, uh, courses on various tiers. Uh, and with that said, we will conclude this video.